all of us here <clears throat> understand, intuit, or are open to the possibility that our essential self of pure awareness is that with which all experience is known, that in which all experience appears, and that out of which all experience is made. But not everyone feels the body and perceives the world in a way that is consistent with this understanding or intuition. In other words, for many of us there is a discrepancy between what we understand and how we feel and perceive. We understand that our entire experience appears in, is known by and is made of this transparent, empty, luminous, ageless, unlocatable presence of awareness. And yet we feel that the body is something solid, dense, heavy, located, finite. And we perceive the world in a way that is consistent with the old belief that it is made out of dead inert stuff called matter, separate from ourselves. And this discrepancy between our understanding and the way we feel and perceive is the cause for the feeling that many people have, even people who have been on the spiritual path for 30 or 40 years, that something is still missing. There is still some part of my experience that has yet to be colonized by my understanding. So at a certain point in these retreats, after after the ground has been laid, our meditations cease focusing on and exploring the essential nature of ourselves. And they begin to turn in the other direction, the, the outward facing path towards the objects of experience again, and, and in particular towards our experience of the, the body, but also the experience of the world. So this is the, what I refer to sometimes as the outward facing path. It is not necessary to have completed the inward-facing path before embarking on this exploration of the body and the world. But at least some understanding of ourself as the open, empty presence of awareness must be in place before we embark on this 
investigation or exploration of the body and world. It's important to understand that this this outward facing path is not a it is not a path of understanding. It is a, a path of experience. And so our meditations don't always follow linear rational pathways. We use irrational means. All we are interested in is our experience. And we use irrational means, visualizations, to evoke a new experience of the body and the world that is consistent with our new understanding. So in this approach, we don't aim to discover that what we essentially are is this open, empty, spacious, luminous presence of awareness. We start with this understanding. So know and feel now that you are this open, empty, luminous, space-like presence of awareness within which all your experience arises. we have understood or at least intuited that everything that appears in this luminous empty space is made of this luminous empty space. We now want to feel the body and perceive the world in a way that is consistent with this understanding or intuition. In other words, we want to allow this understanding to percolate into all realms of our experience, not just the way we think, but the way we feel, perceive, 
act and relate. We want the entire realm of our experience to be transfigured by this understanding, to be suffused with this understanding. So be knowingly this open, empty, luminous presence of awareness and allow the experience of the body to come to your attention. When I say the experience of the body, I mean the actual felt sense of the body, not the, not a thought about the body, not an image of the body, not a memory of the body, but your current, direct, felt sense of the body. And because we are not referring to thoughts or memories or images. We can imagine that we are newborn infants in the sense that infants experience as we do, but they have no past to refer to, no means of conceptualizing or thinking about their experience. So we experience the body now in the way that an infant would experience it. Now an infant has no idea that it is experiencing something called a body. The infant experiences a a flow of sensations, but it has no idea that they are sensations of a body. They are just raw sensations, they're not sensations of anything. So for some of us it is clear that the current experience of the body is simply a flow of sensations appearing in awareness, but for those for whom it is not so clear, take this imagine that you are this newborn infant in order to prevent you referring to thoughts, memories and images. Just the raw experience. Now, as a newborn infant with our eyes closed, we have no knowledge or memory of physical space. 
There is no sense that this sensation is arising in something called physical space. Nor do we have any sense of ourself as an entity or person who experiences this sensation. There is just the raw sensation appearing in an open field, appearing in openness. And just to be sure, for those of us that are, are new to this approach, that to be sure that we understand what I mean by the word sensation as opposed to perception. Let me just clarify that. The sensation would be the way we experience the body from the inside. So the tingling sensation behind the eyes or the chest or the hands or the feet, these are sensations. A toothache would be a sensation. The experience of hunger is a sensation. The experience of the air on our skin is a subtle sensation. But the, the sight of this room or the sound of this voice are perceptions. They are not experiences of the body. They are experiences of the world. They are what, what we call perception. So be very clear that when I use the word sensation, it refers to just our current, direct, intimate experience of the body. And now we, we dive into this sensation. We begin to explore what is our actual experience of it. For instance, without reference to thought or memory, do you experience this, that this sensation has a size, a particular size? Could you say whether it is large or small? What do the words large or small mean if we have no current experience of physical space? The sensation may have a certain intensity Some parts of the, some areas of the sensation may be very subtle, almost imperceptible. Others more intense. Physical pain, so-called physical pain, would be a, a, an intense sensation. Does the current sensation have a shape? In order to 
ascertain the shape of something, we have to find its outline, its border, its edge. See if you can find a clearly defined edge to the current sensation without reference to thought, images or memories. If some of, some of you that have attended several of these retreats are thinking, I have done this before. Then you are not participating with the innocence of a newborn infant. You are participating as a person. The feeling that the body is something solid, dense, limited and located is not dissolved as a result of attending one meditation or one retreat. The feeling that the body is something solid, dense, limited and located outlives the recognition of our true nature. It is a conditioned feeling that has been laid down layer upon layer, year after year. And it therefore runs very deep in us. It takes time for this conditioning to be fully exposed and dissolved. Every time we return to this exploration, we return to it as if for the first time. And in doing so, without our necessarily realizing it, this old conditioned way of feeling the body is gradually being dissolved. This feeling that the body is something solid, dense, limited and located is like a, a stain on a piece of white cloth that is so profoundly the cloth is so deeply impregnated with the, the stain that it seems to be inherent in it. It takes several washes to remove the stain and with each wash part of the stain is removed. Gradually, gradually, gradually the cloth returns to its original whiteness.
the feeling that the body is something solid, dense, limited, located, is a is like a stain on the on the white cloth of awareness. It make it takes many washes to dissolve the stain. And each of our meditation series is one such wash. How do we wash a piece of soiled white cloth? Most of the wash, it it just involves leaving the cloth soaking in warm soapy water. So this contemplation of our experience, occasionally we agitate the cloth, but most of it is just soaking. So this contemplation of our experience is, of our experience of the body is mostly just soaking. We're not actually doing anything to the body, we are contemplating it. The contemplation of the body is the soaking of the body in the warm, soapy water of awareness. Occasionally we agitate it, occasionally we do something to it, occasionally we are more proactive, but most of it is just this Contemplation, soaking. And as the piece of cloth soaks in the warm soapy water, the warm soapy water penetrates more and more deeply into the fabric of the cloth. So as we contemplate the body in this way, the luminous, empty presence of awareness percolates, permeates more and more deeply into the fabric of the body, turning the body into itself. this soaking of the soiled cloth in the white, in the warm, soapy water of awareness could also be conceived as surrendering the body to God's presence. Offering the body to God's presence.
can you find a clearly defined edge to the current sensation? Don't think about this or work this out. Dive into the sensation, explore it. Can you find, as if you were diving into a, a, a cloud in the sky, can you find the edge of the cloud, the edge of the sensation? if there is some residual belief that the skin is the edge of the experience of the body. Drop the label skin, the newborn infant knows nothing of skin. And see that the experience which we label skin is simply itself a sensation, a tingling, vibrating sensation. Does that sensation have a clearly defined order? Take out a piece of paper and a pencil in your imagination. Try to draw the current sensation on the piece of paper. What kind of marks do you make? You're trying to represent the sensation for one who has never had such an experience. Don't refer to thoughts, images, memories. Just the raw experience itself. Are there any lines in your drawing that would correspond to an edge in your experience?
Or is your drawing just a, a mass of dots on the white page? Some dots more densely clustered together to represent the parts of the sen- current sensation that are more intense. Some dots more loosely spaced on the page. And parts of the page completely empty. See that the sensation is never one static object. It is always changing, always flowing, albeit slowly, pulsating, vibrating, like a murmuration of swallows. without reference to thought or memory, does the current sensation have an age? Without reference to thought or memory, does the sensation have a gender? Without reference to thought or memory, do you have any knowledge in this moment of being a man or a woman? without thought or memory. 
without reference to thought or memory. Do you have any experience of this sensation being either healthy or sick? Notice that we are not actually doing anything to the experience of the body itself. We are not manipulating our experience in any way. We are just contemplating it. And in this disinterested contemplation, the body is gradually and progressively divested of not only superimposed beliefs, but superimposed feelings. We are not changing the experience of the body. We are revealing the essential experience of the body. We are not just removing concepts that have been superimposed on the body, but we are removing feelings. We're not even removing them, in fact. We are just seeing that the feelings we previously had, the feeling that my body has a particular shape, size, gender, etc., were not feelings that related to our actual experience. They were superimposed upon our actual experience. Divested of these superimposed beliefs and feelings, the essence, the essential nature of the body is simply revealed laid bare. Imagine that you are a a little particle of pure knowing and you dive inside the sensation and you swim around inside it, tasting or knowing the stuff the sensation is made of.
is the sensation solid or dense? Or is it transparent and empty, spacious? go particularly slowly when you encounter a part of the sensation that is intense. It may be intense, but is it dense and solid? This particle of knowing, exploring the sensation from the inside, is like a a bird flying into a cloud exploring the cloud from the inside. Is the cloud more dense than the empty space of the sky? When the bird leaves the empty sky and enters the cloud, does it leave one medium and enter another? Does it cross a border from the sky into the cloud, or is it one seamless, homogeneous field? And when the cloud becomes darker and greyer, that is when the sensation becomes more intense, is it more difficult for the bird to fly through it? Does the bird ever meet with any resistance? See that the sound of the plane is appearing in the same sky of awareness. And merges into awareness as it vanishes.
without reference to thought or memory. Do you have any experience of weight? Go to the experience that seems to be evidence of weight. Your legs on the chair or floor. What does the newborn infant know of chair or floor or legs? It's just sensation, raw, unnameable sensation. How much does that sensation weigh? The sensation may have a certain intensity to it, but is that intensity evidence of weight? Go to the tingling sensation of your face, that is your your eyes, your nose and your mouth. That sensation also has a, a certain intensity to it. But we don't feel that that sensation weighs anything. It is just suspended in openness weightlessly. Go back and forth with your attention between the sensation of your legs on the chair or floor and the sensation of your face. What's the difference between them? Maybe a certain intensity. But does one weigh something and the other not? Or are both sensations floating weightlessly in this openness? feel that the body is an amorphous, borderless, weightless pulsation or vibration. Suspended weightlessly. in this aware openness.
Now as this particle of knowing, we fly in and out, we dive in and out of the sensation, like a bird dipping in and out of a cloud. And as this particle of knowing, we are very sensitive to the to the medium inside the sensation, the stuff, the substance inside the sensation, and the openness in which it appears. So we take a sample of the sensation and this aware openness. The bird takes a sample of the sky and the cloud. In order to do this, we have to come very close to our experience, to taste the stuff, touch the stuff it is made of. What is the difference between these two samples? The sensation and the aware openness, the cloud and the sky. Do you find any difference between them? See that the formulation, sensation, sensations appearing in awareness is not true, not accurate. We never actually find a, a distinct or discrete object called a sensation appearing in the openness of awareness. If we explore the relationship between the so-called sensation and the aware openness in which it appears, we cannot find a distinction between the two. It's like trying to find a difference between a movie and a screen. So we should drop even the label sensation. The newborn infant knows nothing of a sensation. Something is there, something is vibrating there, something is pulsating there that we will later call that we will later call the body. The body, the experience of the body is not nothing. Something is there, something is pulsating, but what is it that is vibrating in the form of the experience of the body? Don't say, I don't know. If we are experiencing this pulsating, we must be experiencing the stuff it is made of. Touch it, taste it. Dive into this 
vibrating, pulsating, quivering. What is it made of? the stuff that is vibrating itself has no form, no shape, no size, no age, no gender, no density, no weight. But in the form of this vibration it assumes a temporary name and form. That temporary name and form has a size, a shape, a density, a weight, an age, a gender, or seems to have. But its name and form is simply a, a temporary modulation of its essence or reality, which is itself without name or form. This vibration is like a current in the ocean. Made only of water. The current is a, a temporary form, a temporary name and form of the ocean, but there is no discrete, independently existing object called a current. The current is just the movement of water. All that's there is the water. Likewise, there is no such thing as a discrete, independently existing body or sensation. There is just a vibration a vibrating, a pulsating, but the stuff that is vibrating or pulsating is this nameless, formless, transparent, luminous, empty awareness. In other words, the true body is this luminous, empty awareness.
in Peru. The, the word they use for a person translates as animated earth. It's a beautiful understanding. But here, the name we give to a person is condensed consciousness. Notice again that we are not manipulating our experience. We are simply contemplating it. And we are not contemplating it with any other purpose than to know its essence or reality. And in this disinterested contemplation, its essence or reality gradually emerges from the fog of beliefs and feelings with which it has been seemingly veiled. like a, a, th a mist gradually evaporating, revealing the essential transparency and luminosity of the sky. Now cease visualizing or contemplating anything. Just let experience be as it is. Let's remain silent till we're in the dining room. Thank you.